Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam Amma ba'da habitu fillah Continuing on in our brief tafsir The tafsir of Imam Sa'di rahimahullah ta'ala uh, I wanted to briefly go over Surah Al-Infitar and that is because the surah is a reminder a reminder of what will take place on Yom al Qiyamah on the Day of Judgment and we need this for our Iman we need this, we need to keep this in front of us that death will overtake us all that all of us will be resurrected and that is what makes Ahli Iman, distinguishes Ahli Iman from Ahli Kufr that many of the people and the nations before and even up until now and the Mushrikeen of Quraysh they denied Yom al -Bath. and that's why Yom al -Bath is uh, the Day of Judgment is a pillar of Iman as the Prophet said <coughs> in the Hadith of Jibreel when Jibreel والسلام, came in the form of a man and he said to the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, he said Ya Muhammad akhbirni an Islam and then the Prophet والسلام, told him what Islam was and then he said Fakhbirni an al iman and tell me about Iman and the Prophet والسلام, said in tu'minu and took me na billahi wa malaikati wa kutubihi wa rasulihi wa niyam al akhir wa took me na bi qadri khayrihi wa shar. So the Prophet ﷺ mentioned the six pillars of Iman. And took me na billahi is to believe in Allah wa malaikati and his angels wa malaikati wa kutubihi and his books wa rasulihi and his messengers. Uh, and the day of judgment and believing in the divine destiny the qadr, the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the good of it and the bad of it and the shahid or the purpose of mentioning that hadith is to illustrate for us what Yomul Ba'ath, that that's part of our Iman, and that distinguishes us from Ahlul Kufr. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, after Audhu Billah min shaitan al rajim, Bismillah ar Rahman ar Rahim, Ida sama un fatarat, Wida al kawakib un tatharat, Wida al biharu fujirat, Wida al kuburu bu'athirat. Alimat nafsum ma qaddamat wa akharat Ya ayyuhal insanu ma gharraka bi rabbika al kareem Alladhi khalakaka fasawaka fa'addalak Fi ayy suratim ma sha rakabak Kalla bal tukadzibun biddin Wa inna alaykum la hafidin Kiramin katibin Ya'lamuna ma tabakak فعلون إن الأبرار لا في نعيم وإن الفجار لا في جحيم يصلونها يوم الدين وما هم عنها بغائبين وما دراك ما يوم الدين ثم ما دراك ما يوم الدين يوم لا تملك نفس لا نفس لنفس شيء وامر يوم إذ لله uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says <coughs> in uh, Surah Al-Infitar, the cleaving, and this surah is, uh, was revealed in Mecca after Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim in the name of Allah, the most beneficent, the most merciful. When the heaven is cleft asunder and when the stars have fallen and scattered and when the seas are burst forth, and when the graves are turned upside down, then a person will know what he has sent forward and left behind. So these are the first five ayat where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِذَا السَّمَاءُ فَطَرَتْ وِذَا الْكَوَاكِبُ تَثَرَتْ وِذَا الْبِحَارُ فُجِّرَتْ وِذَا الْكُبُورُ بُعْثِرَتْ عَلِمُ نَفْسُ مَّا قَدَّمَتْ وَأَخَّرَتْ 
alimat nafs ma qaddamat wa akharat so a person will know what he has sent forward and what he has left behind imam as-sa'di says when the heaven is torn apart and cracked open its stars scatter all over its beauty vanishes seas burst out and join together to form one sea and graves turn upside down and bring out their dead contents to be gathered for the stance before Allah to be recompensed for their deeds then the cover will be removed what was hidden will then become apparent and each soul will know what it has earned of success or failure this is a description of what will happen yawm al-qiyamah and the frightening nature of watching Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's wonders creation unravel as Allah mentions when the heaven is cleft asunder and when the stars have fallen and scattered and when the seas have burst forth and if you've ever seen some of the natural disasters even if it's just on video most of us haven't experienced it or we wouldn't be able to uh, I wouldn't be here communicating with you and uh, you wouldn't be listening but if you've lived in a in a situation would live through an earthquake I've, I've been in a situation like that and for those people who have survived tornadoes and, and seen some of the wonders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's creation but also the horror of those creation and Yom Al-Qiyamah will be much more devastating than that and much more frightening than that <clears throat> then the Imam he says this is when the unjust will bite their own hands when confronted with the fact that their deeds are rendered in vain their scale of good actions turns out to be light the injustices they committed flock towards them and their skins accumulate before them <clears throat> and their sins accumulate before them this is when such persons will feel certain of the permanent misery and eternal punishment to come this is also when the pious will win those who brought righteous deeds will then achieve the great success and eternal delight and will acquire safety from the punishment of hellfire and as the Salaf used to say <clears throat> that this life a dunya a dunya dar Dar al Amal Wal Akhira Dar al Jaza. That this life is the time for deeds, and the hereafter is when you'll reap those deeds. That's when you'll be rewarded for those deeds. If you did evil deeds and wickedness and sinfulness, this will come back to you, of course, on the day of judgment, and you'll be judged. And it will come back to you in your graves. So once you leave this life and you perish and your loved ones leave you and your wealth leaves you and all your property leaves you, all that you own, then you will begin your accounting. Then you will be in Al Barzakh then you will either experience comfort in the grave or torment in the grave so this dunya this life this is the time this is your time and your chance to do something good do something good for your soul do something good so you can win do something good something of khair that benefits yourself and benefits others and this is the time for Toba. This is the time for coming back to Allah. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addresses mankind. <coughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya yul insan, ma gharaka bi rabbika al kareem, alladhi khalaka ka fa sawaka fa addalak. 
في أي سورة ما شاركبك كلا بل تكذبون بالدين وإن عليكم لحافظين كرام كاتبين يعلمون ما تفعلون Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says O oh man what has made you careless about your Lord the most generous who created you fashioned you perfectly and gave you due proportion in whatever form he willed he put you together nay but you deny a deen the day of judgment but verily over you are appointed angels to watch you kiram and katibin they're honorable writing down your deeds and they know all that you do the malaika they don't miss anything they don't miss anything for what you do and Imam Sa'di says about these verses, he says, Allah says, while admonishing humankind, this is an address to mankind, Ya you al insan, O you mankind. So this is a, for, the, for the believers and the non, uh, uh, and the disbelievers. All are being addressed. Allah says, while admonishing humankind for falling into shortcomings regarding the rights of their Lord and uh, daring to commit what angers him. Oh man, what made you careless about your Lord, the most generous? Allah asks, do you humankind do this because you belittle Allah's rights or because you have contempt for his torment or because you do not believe in his recompense? SubhanAllah. So that shows us that there's a relationship between our sinfulness and the type of arrogance, that either it's arrogance, believing that uh, out of arrogance and a lack of thankfulness and gratefulness to Allah for the blessings he's bestowed upon you, your health, your wealth, your family, all, all the countless blessings, countless, why? Because we can't count them, there's so many. If you have even a little bit of sickness, you begin to appreciate the times when you could breathe properly. You appreciate the times when you had a healthy body. You appreciate the times when your speech was stronger and your vocal cords were uh, intact. All of these things are part of the ni'amillah. They're the benefits of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the blessings of Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we have to be grateful, but we show ungrateful, ungratefulness by committing sin. And that committing sin, as Imam Sa'di says, is uh, a, it could be because of a belittling of the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or it could be contempt, hatred uh, for his torment, or because you do not believe in his recompense, the disbelievers. They don't believe the, when you ask people who don't even believe in Allah at all. They don't believe in any concept of God. They say, oh, I don't believe in God. So. That goes without saying they don't believe in Yom al Qiyamah, they don't believe in a reckoning. They believe that this life is it. That this life, all of their pleasures and all of their rewards will be, and then they die. This is what they believe. And some people believe in reincarnation, that they'll be reincarnated in another life, in another form. And people have all kind of distorted beliefs. And then there are those people on their tongues, and may Allah forgive us and protect us from being those people who say on their tongues they believe, but in reality they don't believe. وَعِيَّاذٍ بِاللَّهِ مِنْ ذَلِكَ And may Allah protect us from being the munafiqun. Ameen. Then Imam Sa'di says, Is not Allah who created you, fashioned you in the best mold? Allah created you in the best mold. And gave you due proportion, formed you in perfect and fa uh, faultless shape, best form and most beautiful image? Does it befit you, O humankind, to deny the bounty of the most gracious or be ungrateful to the kindness of the most kind? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of His graciousness and His favor has bestowed you in the form that you, you, you are. And those attributes that you have, some people are born with beauty and born handsome. Some people are born strong. Some people are born strong and handsome. Some people are born beautiful and fit. Some people are, are, are born uh, uh, in, in all various forms. And what is a great na'ma for all the various forms and all the various colors and all the various shapes that we have is health. That na'ma of health. And so many people are not blessed with that that 
How many people do you know, especially in this day and age? I know many people who at my age, uh, who didn't reach my age, people who I graduated from high school who didn't die from violence or anything like this, but instead they died for health issues, died of cancer in, in their 20s. Their life, they, did, they expected to get married, they expected to do this and do that and do, the, do the, all these things in this dunya, but Allah didn't have, you know, didn't give them the health to be able to do that. And it was written for them to die at an early age. I had a good friend of mine who was one of my best friends in high school. And he died, I believe it was probably in his early 30s. You know, he died of cancer. So we don't know a good beloved companion of mine, Rahmatullahi alayhi rahmatan wasiyah, Ali Compton, from Compton, a beautiful brother a beloved brother to me, same age as me. And he just died maybe six months ago. He passed. Rahmatullahi alayhi, rahmatan wasiyah. We don't know. So we're, we're blessed with what we have. That should make us appreciate. If we, as I'm speaking, I'm thinking of so many examples. I know other brothers who I became Muslim with who weren't blessed and aren't blessed uh, for those that are still living and those that are still Muslim, I can think of another good companion of mine who's in prison for life, exact same age as me, exact same age. We grew up in the, in the masjid together as far as our Islam. You know, I can think can relate countless stories about this this brother and some of the positive things that we used to do and some of the things we used to do and and activities. But now he's in jail for life. He will never be out unless Allah favors him. He's already spent about 10 years in there. And he will not, it, it's hard for me to imagine. And when I, whenever I look at his picture in the prison, or I've written him also, and I just think that's a reminder for me, the ni'am, that's a reminder. I better get busy doing good deeds because I'm blessed to be outside. He is looking, he, he won't see his children. He has many children, many children. And his children, some of them are going astray. Why? Because their father's not around. So we have to appreciate the ni'am Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us. Ya ayyul insan, ma gharaka bi rabbika al-kareem. You know, what will make you ungrateful to your Lord, the one who has created you and fashioned you and gave you due proportion? Imam Imam Sa'di then says, Does it befit you, O humankind, to deny the bounty of the most gracious or be ungrateful to the kindness of the most kind? This behavior results from your ignorance, injustice, stubbornness, and in inequity. You should thank Allah that He did not make you in the shape of a dog, a donkey, or other animals, since in whatever form He willed, He put you together. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as the Prophet ﷺ said, look to those beneath you. You know, yes, some people are born deformed. Yes, some people are born and have various illnesses. But look to those beneath you. When I look at some of my trials and tests that I have of, of and related to health and things like this, and then I maybe I'm praying next to someone who I see has much worse status, much younger than me, much older than me, whatever the case may be. And so that is a reminder for us and for us to be grateful.